My company is Veridity Energy. We're based out of Philadelphia. We have a product that's software that helps consumers become prosumers and figure out how to control their assets so that they can become a flexible resource as we try to put more renewable energy into the power mix on the power grid, customers who have flexible resources become a very important part of keeping reliability on the system. What is your title at Veridity? What is uh, the... I'm the Senior Vice President of the Western Region. Okay. So, empowering customers to be prosumers. Tell us more about what shapes that takes. Tell us more about um, what you mean by customer. What are the kinds of customers that you serve at Veridity? Uh, well, customers are, for us, anyone that has assets that are controllable. Mm -hmm. And so some of the examples of customers, um, we, are, we work with the campus at University of California, San Diego campus, mm -hmm. and they have all kinds of things. They have gas turbines, they have fuel cells, they have solar panels, they have chiller tanks. And so we work with all of the assets to have them work together to say what is the most reliable and most economic way for me to deploy my resources. Sometimes you can imagine if you uh, need the customer to be flexible, you would say, can you please back down something so, so that the grid has some relief? Um, so an example of that, we work with um, an aggregation of high-rise buildings in downtown Manhattan, and we can actually send a signal into the building management systems and have them give the grid a little relief. Uh, another, um, so you are helping organizations turn into mini utilities, even as they are trying to meet their own um, energy resiliency and or independence needs. Right. We have we help them become virtual power plants, and so the genesis of the technology was the things that are happening on what we would call the bulk power grid, the big mm. power grid with mm. the transmission wires, and they always make sure, the operators make sure you have a reliable and an economic solution, mm -hmm. but it stopped at the customer meter. We're now yeah. moving that technology past the edge to say how do we use the same smart systems, the same good ideas, the same management of energy in a way that customers can decide when it's a good time for them to be buying or selling or using their own resources mm. within their microgrid. Mm. So how does, uh, tell us more about how that gives relief to the utility in terms of their capacity planning. Well, what's happening with the utilities, a couple of interesting things, mostly driven by renewable energy. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more unpredictability when you put renewable energy in the resource mix because the wind doesn't blow or the wind blows too much. The sun is shining, the sun's not shining. And so what happens is you can use this, this orchestra of assets mm -hmm. to say, okay, the wind's not blowing, but this is not a critical power load for me right now mm -hmm. so I can back it down. Mm -hmm. Or the wind's blowing a lot it's a great time for me to do something that's energy intensive. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that this would um, be times when you could um, manage your data center and say, let me do a lot of computations right now, things that are energy intensive, or it makes the case for storage, better storage, right. so that you can say, okay, mm -hmm. right now I can actually get paid for taking power off the grid, and then I can get paid for selling it back to the grid. So there is a real win for customers in all of this, while it's still maintaining and helping the reliability for mm -hmm. the system operator. Um, SMART, and innovating SMART, um, is, a, is an acronym that we made up, and the A in SMART stands for adaptive. And um, it just strikes me that this is such a um, adaptiveness creating um, scenario that you've created. It is indeed, and what we try to do is not say, oh, you need a lot of investment before you become your own prosumer. So our example, we call it serial number one of our vPower software, was to pre-cool the books in the law library at Drexel University. And so they could pre-cool the books in the law library and then use the thermal properties of that to ride through the peak of the day. And so you can actually peak shift with something as simple as a law library full of books. And so it's taking that technology and saying, okay, what else can I create storage out of without necessarily having a battery on my premise? So it, it is. It's trying to create what the customer has and not say, oh, let's start new. 
Pre-cool books. That's the first time I've heard that phrase. <laughs> right, right. So, and there are lots of things that have those thermal properties. The right. things that we would work with more are something like a chiller tank. Right. So you can, you know, set that up at right. night. Again, if you if the price of power is low, you can get your chiller tank set up and then move through the day right. by not using a lot of right. electricity. Right. The other interesting part is the changing nature of the peak. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at what happens when renewable power becomes prevalent, mm -hmm. it, you have all the fuel you need in the sun at the peak of the day. So our notion of peak being a high-priced hour is not the same as it right. used to be. Right, it changes the whole profile. And so back to adaptive, what you really need are assets that can move very fast and very flexibly for short periods of time in what we might call the crossover period. So as the sun's going down but the wind's coming up, or the wind's coming down and the sun is coming up, you have assets that can move very fast mm. just to, to fill in those gaps and not have to start a power plant that might be a dirtier resource mix to just get you through those few hours. It sounds like there's such a flexible capability. What kinds of tools are emerging to help people to know what their choices are and to be able to make decisions about it and to make, make this very uh, kinds of hands-on management be very... Um, relatively easy and automated. Yeah, it, well, there are markets, wholesale markets, market prices starting. So there's market prices for the energy product. And now you'll see in certain areas, the system operators are developing market prices for these firming products. And even where there aren't open markets, the utilities are now becoming uh, partners with the with customers as solution providers so that the value of what a customer can do can can be compensated or valued in a way that customers now have either a revenue stream or a value stream to put more capability in. Mm -hmm. And so it's a pretty exciting time to see this all all coming together. <clears throat> I can see the the passion in your in your um your your way of speaking. I can hear it in your voice. Um, before we go, tell us just briefly how you came to do this work. My background is electrical engineering and I used to keep the lights on for a living. I was a grid operator, um, but never got to work on the customer side of the meter. And so it's really lovely to see the technology allow customers to benefit from knowledge that we've had for a long, long time. That's awesome. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you.